a form of warfare is what's happening right now in the sense that, you know, for example, the Russian skies are completely clear. Not just because that, you know, no uh, external airlines will necessarily fly there, but because Boeing and Rolls-Royce and GE and Airbus basically pulled all of their support, all of their parts. Hey guys, welcome back to Library of Wealth. Today we have an interview with Chamath as he gives us his prediction for the current economic meltdown we're seeing. In the midst of the crypto and capital markets losing market share in the past few months, Chamath believes that we're more in an economic war with Russia than in a physical one, and we're willing to put collateral and chips on the field in order to win. He believes we're now in a different form of escalation, but that this will ultimately be the framework for how future economic wars are fought. Chama says that when you're in the midst of adversity, you need to do whatever you have to to win. Please stick around till the end of the video as Chamath will go over his market prediction for the rest of the year and how rising inflation will eventually lead to a decoupling of assets across the entire stock and financial markets. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy the content we do here on this channel. Let's get right into the video. There's a 17th century phrase that says adversity makes for strange bedfellows. And I think what happens when you are in the middle of enormous adversity, you know, you need to do whatever it takes to win. I actually think we are at war, but it's the most positive form of it in the sense that we are learning a different kind of warfare. Now, if you think about how we used to fight up until basically uh, the Persian Gulf War, it was armaments and tanks. And then that evolved in the Middle East because we had to fight insurgents and, you know, uh, urban terrorism in many ways, right? I think this is a, a way in which we are learning that there's a different kind of warfare as well, which is fundamentally economic. And so, you know, it may not take the same shape as drones and missiles and fire and guns and bullets, but I think you would be foolish to make the mistake that we are now uh, not at economic war with Russia. Um, and at the end of the day, the outcome is the same, which is either they survive or they don't survive. And everything we've done points to that we are willing to fight um, and we are willing to put a lot of economic collateral and chips on the field in order to win this battle. So I think in that respect, we are kind of at a war. Did we, are we on a, is, is this a nuclear level economic? Uh, but this decoupling. is my point, is like everybody yeah. has a historical framework where they want to go back to how the natural path of escalation works. And I think this is a very different form of escalation that we need to consider. And I think that this is the kind of warfare that may actually, you know, be the, the way in which wars are fought in the future. Shamath goes on to say that the petroleum sector is being affected by this meltdown because the international banks won't even ensure the transportation of barrels of oil to their destination. Chamath has started a $200 million investment in a solar company to pivot away from a reliance on fossil fuels. You seize assets, you shut off access to supply routes, you make it impossible for anything to work. So, you know, I'll give you a simple example. A form of warfare is what's happening right now in the sense that, you know, for example, the Russian skies are completely clear, not just because that, you know, no external airlines will necessarily fly there, but because Boeing and Rolls-Royce and GE and Airbus basically pulled all of their support, all of their parts. Um, we've gone to war with respect to their petroleum and LNG supplies. How? Not necessarily because we won't still stop payments, which we are still enabling, but because the actual refiners won't take the oil and the LNG because they then would be subject to sanctions. The people who would ship that are no longer taking those uh, payments or those those barrels of oil into the marketplace because they can't get insured by international banks. So in all of these various ways, we are actually at war. And I think maybe this is the way war should be fought in the future because it'll save thousands of lives in, in the more classic way of describing how lives are sacrificed for. I announced, what was it, last week, I think it was? The solar deal? The solar deal, you know, I put $228 million into this thing. 
And then I did another deal. I put 45 million bucks into this thing you guys know about, which we haven't announced yet. But other than that, I've been literally uh, white knuckled. Uh, I don't like to open the stock app. There's oh. no point. No point. <laughs> Take some drama yeah, meme before app. you open your Morgan Stanley the account. The stock app. The stock app. And it, what's, what's so funny is like my Bloomberg terminal, which is right beside me here at my desk, I have not logged into it. Okay. Oh Put it in a drawer. <laughs> Unplug it. Yeah. There's just no point. I, at the end of every week, I get a report, right? Kind of like our PL. And I just look at the top line, like Connor always sends me the top line is like, and, and the last like eight weeks in a row, we've lost 1%, we've lost 2%, we've lost 3%. I sent you guys this tweet from Morgan Housel, who is a great guy. And he has this fabulous tweet. He says, the sh he, he, it says the, sh the shock cycle. And it's this beautiful cycle. Assume good news is permanent, oblivious to bad news. Then you ignore the bad news. Then you deny the bad news. <laughs> then you panic at the bad news. But then you accept the bad news. <laughs> And then you ignore the good news, you deny the good news, you accept the good news, and then you assume the good news is permanent. That starts the cycle. And if I had to look at that, and if you actually look at a bunch of the earnings reports that have come out in the last three or four weeks, I actually think we're in the part of the cycle here where we're starting to ignore the good news. And we're so negative, and we're so emotionally wrapped up in everything, that people forget that actually the world tends to keep moving forward. Um, we are not in World War III. By any measure, are we in not? We are not anywhere near that, okay? And so I just think it's important for people to take a step back and take a really deep breath. But I think that there's a lot of good news out there. There's a ton of good news. And for people who don't know the term- and we're ignoring For people it. who don't know the term print, when we say there's a print, that is just a colloquialism in the financial markets that something was formatted for printing previously and you got good news. So an official report is sometimes called, we got a print. I agree with, I think what's going on is there is some underlying good news, right? But there's this overhead of a small chance of something catastrophic happening. So how do you price that in? And, it's like and a one outer, right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. But it's, this guy it's can like hit one, quads. We're set over set. It's a one hour to one hour to the apocalypse, basically. If basically. that tiny probability thing happens, the, the game is over. So why so even worry? So it doesn't matter. It doesn't right? matter. Like it doesn't matter. So if it's the cost of happen. your house doesn't matter if there's a nuclear war. That's right. This is this is the thing that people underestimate. Is like that's not a that's not a risk that one should be hedging in any way, financially. Right at that point, the only thing that matters is the health and safety of your family and your friends, but really in your immediate family, like, can you take care of them and make sure they're safe? You know, if you're if you're an investor in the financial markets or you're building a company, managing for that externality, in my opinion, I'm not sure it makes a ton of sense because I don't think you can manage to that externality. It's, you have no impact on it's it. It's cataclysmic. It's, it's something it's, it's completely out of your control. Scenario. Yeah. So I think you have to manage to the 99.999% of normalized outcomes. And I think right now there are some what's called green shoots, meaning like, some positive news in the world and some positive data. By the way, the other thing that we saw today was, or this week was Jerome Powell. And you know, the Jerome Powell testimony was also in the middle of massive amounts of bad news, some actually pretty decent good news, which was, he said he's gonna raise by 25 basis points in March. Everybody knew that, right? So we took the 50 basis pointer off the table, but then he was very clear that they were going to be data-driven. And in the language of the Federal Reserve, what that essentially means is like, we're going to be patient and wait and see. And if you couple it with what I said before, which is the economic cost of these economic sanctions towards Russia can be calculated. And I think that we have proven a willingness to print capital and money. And so if you put those two things together, I think there could be a real possibility that Powell becomes very accommodative. And, you know, he and Biden and the entire administration come together with Europe and everybody else and say, Get the money printer back going because we are we are going to stand the line on these economic sanctions and we're going to, you know, sort of soft land the economy here because we think there's recessionary risks. Chamath weighs the cost benefit analysis of what would happen to the financial market in the event of an escalation in the Middle East or Russia. He believes that you shouldn't hedge your company assets on a potential collapse and it doesn't make sense as an investor or owner of a company to try and manage externalities that ultimately won't affect your business. Chamath says that he thinks the Fed will continue to print money while the economic sanctions hold firm, and the positive data shows the economy will land softly. We'll be keeping an eye on this. What do you think about Chamath's prediction for the current market? Do you think that the Fed will continue to raise interest rates, and inflation will take us into another bracket of volatility we haven't yet seen before? 
comment down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. This is Library of Wealth. We'll see you in the next video.